everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Uh, we're shooting this show live uh, September 14th, 2001. Probably most of you in different countries and different cities across the United States are going to see this in the months to come, maybe in, even as you know, late as 2002. Who knows? I mean, if you're watching it on the internet, it could be any time. And yet, probably for most of us, we'll remember what happened on September 11th, 2001, where it would be difficult to describe watching that event, the event of the World Trade Center, the world of the, the bombing of the Pentagon. And yet, for all of us, that is now a reality in our lives. And for those who are watching it live and have seen the show before, remember that it was only two shows ago that we, for the first time that we've ever done anything like this in my opening, we showed pictures of a, of a, of a funeral, of a funeral that took place in, in this particular case in Israel. And I remember talking at that time that, yes, this is a, a family of Israelis who had lost their wife and their mother. And I said at that time, it could be in Palestine, it could be in Macedonia, it could be in Africa in a lot of places, it could be just in a lot of places. And I never mentioned that it could be in the United States. But now, we do know that there will be a lot of families like that family. Maybe missing a son, maybe missing a brother, maybe missing a father, a mother, a daughter, and what we talked about then, and what we need to talk about now again, is how long are, are, are we going to let that continue? How many more families? We've added in the last three or four days 10,000 more families, and with the, with the ripple effect and how close we are now, 100,000 more families that have to have those faces at the funeral of a loved one. And why? Why? because they died of old age of natural causes, because they died doing something they love to do? No, because we don't understand. And what is that thing that we don't understand? What is that thing that, that happened on 9-11, 9-11, 9-11-2001? What is the wake-up call for us? If you're watching from outside the United States, you might not know that the emergency call in all the cities around the United States is 911. So if you're in trouble, you call 911. So what is the wake up call for us at 911? What do we need more of now? What as human beings, all of us, all of us, because there were people in the World Trade Center from hundreds, literally hundreds of countries. So there will be families like that picture, like those faces, those boys, that father, that mother, all over the world. White, black, yellow, every color of our human family are going to have people in that state. So what is the wake-up call for us? What is the 911 call? Do you think we need more religions? Do you think we need more money? Do you think we need more... What? what? What do you think we need more of on this earth? Do we even need more food or water? There are people starving. There are people who can't get water. Do we need more sex? Do we need more lineages in religions? What exactly do you think we need? What is the wake-up call for humanity? And clearly, Again, it's love. We don't love ourselves, and we don't love each other, and we don't know the true love. And throughout history, that has been the call. That has been the call of the starters of the religions, of the true experiencers, the Muhammads, the Jesuses, the Krishnas, the Buddhas. What did they come to tell? All of them. They came to tell about love. And what is it that we don't understand? It's, that, it's about that love. 
And when we talk in every show, since the very first one is the 125th show, and every show is dedicated to that oneness. And what is that oneness? It is the experience within us all of the truth, of what people call God or Brahman or whatever. It is that experience of the connection between us all, the love that we truly are. And over and over again, until we experience that love and we live in the separation of colors and ages and money and all the ways we separate out, there are always going to be pictures like that. There are always going to be holy wars or wars about land or wars about something because we don't know the true love. And it's not that it's not there to love. It's not that it's not there to know because it is. And for all of us, how long can we let this madness go on? How long can we go on and not seek out that love. And it was interesting because that day was obviously, and it still is, I mean, it's just a traumatic experience on Earth. I guess the closer you were to it, the closer you were to the East Coast of the United States, the more traumatic it was in a way. But for me, it was a very traumatic time, and everyone I spoke to, and I was getting a lot of calls that day, that Tuesday, that 911 day. And all I said to them, and I'm sure this is true to one extent or another, for every person watching this show, whenever you're watching it, if you've lasted this long, then you had a job a week ago, whatever day it is in your world. You have a job today, a destiny today, and you have a destiny tomorrow, a week from now, and as long as you have breath, and that is to spread the vibration of love, to be that light. You are the light of the world, as I. And until we recognize that, it's only a matter of time before it's your family. And the family of man can really soar into this new age if we recognize the beauty that each of us is and the beauty that every one of us is, because we're all the connected and we're all the same. What we see as differences are so shallow and so minute compared to that love. So in whatever way you think you're following your life and your destiny, it's time to know the love. So we have an extraordinary show tonight. We have an, an old, old friend of Bridging Heaven and Earth who's, I mean, he's not like a thousand years old, but he's just been a real supporter of the show, and his life is dedicated. Carlos Reynoso's life is dedicated to sharing that love, to feeling that love and sharing that love in the deepest way possible. And he just travels the earth doing that. He's a Renaissance man. He's an inspirational artist and a musician. He produces self-esteem videos. He has three incredible albums out. Wise Man, Sunrise, and Carlos Reynosa. He's been nominated for a Native American Grammy Award. He's going to be playing at those awards. But more important about Carlos is his support for that love. Is his support for where he sees that love manifesting. And that's why he's on tonight's show. He came up this morning for the sound check. He drove all the way back two hours. He drove up two hours, drove back two hours, and came back tonight. And is driving back tonight to share his love with us because he knows what this show is about and why people watch this show. We also have an extraordinary, a, a different kind of thing because this is a different kind of week for all of us. We're showing a, a, we're playing an audio tape of a song that Leslie and I, some of you have seen some of the songs and seen Leslie on the show. But this time, she's not coming on the show, and we, we wanted to play this song. It's called The Question. And it's love is the question, and love is the answer. 
and this is television. And I'm going to meditate during this entire song. It's a seven-minute song. And the crew is going to pick up different shots, those faces of the boys, those faces of the parents. And it's an opportunity for us all to recommit to what our destiny is, is to be the light of this world. It is time for it, and the world needs it. So join me in a short meditation. This is a song by Lesia. We can try too hard when it's easy. We can want too much we don't really need. We can save our laughter for tomorrow. We can trap ourselves when we're so
I okay so we just really need to rededicate ourselves to whatever level to go to the next level the time is now so we're going to start this portion of tonight's show with a, uh, a, a video by Carlos Reynoso. It's called Follow the Children. The, uh, the pictures, the slides on, the, sh on the, the video were taken by Carlos, an extraordinary photographer. I don't know if you've already seen some of his photography that's around the set during the, uh, the, the, uh, the question song. And Carlos obviously has written the music and is singing. So whenever we're ready, follow the children. There's a video by Carlos Reynosa. Hi everybody, wasn't that magnificent? So we're gonna have Carlos uh, live, and then we're gonna have Tony join him for the second for the second song. He's gonna do three songs live at this on the set here tonight. First song is called Sunrise, then From This Moment On, and then You're a Blessing. Uh, Carlos has three CDs out: uh, Sunrise, uh, 
Grammy-nominated Wise Man as Best Independent CD, and uh, Carlos Reynos is his third CD. So here we are live with Carlos. With every sunrise, there is a beginning. Recently, I, uh, I lost my grandmother, and uh, when someone passes to the spirit world, it is a tragic thing at, at times, but to know that they're here with you, it gives you strength, but things always change. This song is called uh, From This Moment On. I wrote this for my grandmother, and I dedicated this album, Wise Man, to my grandmother. Jesse Orozco.
has changed from this moment on my life will never be the same from this moment on and I will cry I will cry and I will cry From this moment on, my life will never be the same. From this moment on, and I will pray. And I has changed from this moment on my life will never be the same from this moment on
life has changed from this moment on. My life will never be the same from this moment on. From This next song I'm going to play you is a song about how each and every one of us is a blessing. Each and every one of us. You are a great man. You are a great woman. No greater, but no less than anyone else. This is a beautiful life. There's no greater gift. No greater gift. You are a blessing. You are truly a blessing.
when you hear me singing, I'm singing to you. You are the best, no greater, but no less. You are a part of we, and we are a part of you. You are a blessing. You are the loving one. Yes, you are. Yes, the loving one. Fantastic, Carlos. Thank you. So now we're going to do Carlos' second video. Again, the, the, the photos are by Carlos, and the song is by Carlos. It's called One Bright Day, and then Carlos is going to be on the set to, to talk to us about his experiences. So One Bright Day.
welcome. We're on the set with Carlos. Carlos, so we've seen a lot of you. We've seen your photos, we've seen your videos, and we've heard you sing. So where do you get your inspiration? How does that, what moves you? Oh, I think uh, just the art form itself, you know, life itself. It's a continual, continual movie. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun, definitely. And so it was a really exciting time for you when you got nominated for, I mean, I know you have how much energy and time and love you put in to the Wise Man CD and then to have people recognize it. And you know, the nice thing about it is that um, being independent, you know, uh, I don't even know who nominated me. So it's really special, you know, because other big corporations have nominated their own people and uh, for it to be doing so well on native radio and what can I say? Yeah. Well, the songs, they, they, yeah. you know, they feel like the truth, they feel like love. Well, I, I tell you, uh, where I live, I, I sleep and I roll out of bed and I record and then I roll back into bed and I roll out of bed and I record. Well, you did a lot of driving today, <laughs> so you, didn't, you weren't rolling back and forth to the oh, recording studio. No. Well, when I was you know, recording, yeah, yeah, yeah when I was recording long. it, I worked on it probably about, you know, three and a half years at least. Really? Oh, yeah. Continue. Yeah, I know, that takes a long time. Yeah, it takes a long that. time. Yeah, we were talking this morning about, you know, sound check and how to get all the levels right. And to get it really right, especially an independent thing like that. Oh, definitely. It takes really a but lot of But great musicians, you know, I've had great support. Uh -huh. uh, people love to play on my albums. They like the music and people are, you know. Yeah, it's, it's joyous and beautiful. Exactly. Right. Exactly. People like to express themselves. And yeah, you know, I was just, you know, thinking actually at the opening, you know. I mean, I, get, I didn't get to it. I mean, it's so much, you know, it's interesting because in a way, there's so much to say, it's a talk show and there's so much music, but there's like the answers in the silence. You know, it's interesting how we, you know, as humans we use all the words and they're valuable and they have their time, but the real answer, the real answer where the love lies is within inside us when we... When it comes when it out, it's yeah. true life, you know. Yeah, and then Artists to let it out like that is really the, a great gift. And so. I mean, I know your music and everything you do encourages other people's creativity. Why don't you talk about that, how you've seen how it works like that? Well, you know, it just depends. It, it's on so many different levels because when you say a certain word or you sing a certain word, it really puts it across when you're singing a melody. But the flute is uh, something that can really encourage people because, you know, sometimes words get in the way. And sometimes pure emotion, pure sound is a better communication. Yeah, because people put different interpretations on different exactly. words. Exactly. It brings the God out in other people on their connection with it. it. They see that I feel it, and it's easier for them to feel whatever it is that they're working on, whatever life brings upon them, you know? Humanity is, being humane is, is something under great, you know, great distress or great joy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the best of people are the ones that have great tragedy and still can be humane. We're going to see pretty soon what, how those kind of things and how, you know, compassion works and love works, you know, in the external plane when, when real tragedy hits and real horror and real anger and real fear. You know, you, all you can pray is, is remember that God's on everyone's side. They love all children. Everyone loves their children and their ancestors and their how, parents. How do you think we got from, like, the point of, like, in every religion, the Master came to spread love and... And how do we how do we get to to the holy wars? How do we get to the? Well, I think it comes back to words. People dwell on a certain phrase or or this or that, and and forget that the true meaning is love and and knowing that everybody else needs respect the same. Everybody loves their children the same, the same. And when somebody says God is only on my side, they couldn't be any more wrong. God is on everyone's side. He treats everyone the same, no matter where they come from. The basis of most and almost all religions, if you go down to the basis, is, is that love like you were speaking about. I really yeah, I truly know, believe it's that. It's interesting because when, you know, this whole thing happened, I mean, we were supposed to have, as you know, you know, on the, uh, on the website and on the, f the flyers that we put all over, we had that Shelley was coming on, Shelley Flanders, the operating director, to talk about the foundation. Then we were thinking that maybe, you know, there was something more appropriate than to talk about what the new things were happening with the foundation. Then I thought I'd put on one of the songs from the CD, you know, Leslie, Abridging Heaven and Earth, and then there's a song on there, Isn't There Enough God to Go Around? And it's amazing. There's plenty. That you would think. It's inside you, it's inside me, it's inside everyone right. the same. Right. Some people think that there's a middleman here or there, but that's when they run into trouble. 
Or so how, how would you recommend that people <coughs> make that direct connection or make that realization, that understanding of that what have God to is love? Respect and, their own life. If they respect their own life, it's easier to respect others. Why, why don't people and how can they more? Well, I think they have to realize that it's not a, from the outside, it's from the inside out. Once you feel it inside, it's so easy. It really truly is. And whether it be being silent like you do, or playing music, or doing something that you love for someone else, it can truly, truly make you connected to who? To the Creator, the greater force that's all around us. Creation is a wonderful thing. Love is a wonderful thing. There's no greater, greater gift in life. And how can we take it so easily? And then Anyone. We, yeah, and then when we experience that, we realize we're all brothers and sisters. And we're brothers and sisters with the dolphins and the whales and the four-leggers. Exactly. The, you, know, all, it, you know, we use different words for it in different cultures, it's, but it's all the same. It's, truly, it's that oneness. It's truly tragic when our media, or any media, puts the devil's face on anyone. We need to see the, the humanity in everyone. Everyone has the same humanity. They love. They create life. They die. They pass. They, they love. They bleed. Nobody's a devil just because they fly one flag or another. This earth is a beautiful entity of love and life. When you go apart from it, there's no difference between countries. Right. You know, people can worship cloth all they want. They can be proud of where they come from, but at the same time, others can be just as proud and love that life and love that love and feel just as strongly about the future for the children. We need a good future. There's a, there's a poem, I can't remember the poem very well, but uh, something of, if your tribe had fire, would you hold it against us? Or would you give it to us as well and let us have warmth? Would you just let us be in the cold? Or would you share that fire so we all could be warm? Yeah, I mean, it's like at the opening. I mean, there's plenty of there's plenty of food, there's plenty of water, and people are starving. People exactly. are, are, are in a drought. Now, we can, get, we can get guns and weapons all over the world, but we can't seem to get water. Because the, we don't realize that by not feeding that person, it's like not feeding ourselves. There's, no, except, there's no doubt that we've made great strides in technological things, or, or this, or that, or this, but you know, humanity in many ways, our governments or whatever, really need to sit down and go, well, how come we haven't stretched out in our spiritual way? How come we haven't become more humane towards the animals, towards the earth, towards our children in the future, the seventh generation? You know, now they're like, oh, just who cares about the caribou? We need this. We need that. I know that this this country has done great things. Within a few years, they could build tanks and, and planes and this and that. I know within a couple of years, we could have the free sun supplying all of us, the whole world, with energy. It's free. And I'm sorry if you can't put a meter on it, but it's, it's, it's over. The industrial age is over. No more tycoons. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta, we've got to have a new paradigm. A paradigm exactly. where that connection is recognized and experienced. We or all can say it. We yeah, can we're, we're going to finish. We're going to finish it off here. Unless that realization is made and soon, that it's just going to be a time when there's going to be tremendous strife and there's going to be a lot of suffering families. And there really, in a way, is no need for it anymore because enough people know, as you do, and then you go around and more and more people are responding to that connection that you're sharing with people. You can't keep eating up green earth. How can you keep doing that? How can we keep disrespecting the plants, the animals? The ocean, the dolphin, you, na Everything. you name it. How many species do we have to lose? Right. What do we choose to live with? Which human beings do we choose to live with? Everyone deserves the same respect and the same right. We should share fire with everyone. We should share sun with everyone, water. The yeah, shirt. there's just a fear that we won't have enough because we're not experiencing ourselves as the infinite love that we are. So, well, I guess as we normally do, the show ends faster than we think. And again, we're coming to the end of it. It's been an extraordinary week in real time here. When you see the show, I don't know, it'll probably be an extraordinary week in that way. But for us here, the 911 call has come, not just for America, 
not just for the Western world, for the whole world, for every one of us, the 911 call has come. And the call is, there are enough nations, there's enough water, there's enough food, there are enough religions, but there's not enough love. So let's go for that love, and let's make that love real. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. Come again.